Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. In this video we're going to look at finding different segment lengths within circles. The first property that we're going to talk about deals with two chords intersecting inside of a circle and when those chords intersect each other they split each other into two smaller segments each and the way our property is going to work is if we take the product of the segments of one of the chords that has to equal the product of the segments of our second chord. So here we've got two chords intersecting at point E. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at doing the product, which means we're going to be multiplying pieces of chords together. So first let's look at our chord that runs from A to C. Point E splits that into segment AE and segment EC. And if we multiply those together, if we take AE times EC, then that has to equal the product. Now we need to look at our other chord. So DB is split by point E again, split into DE and EB. So we're going to multiply those pieces together. So we're going to take DE times EB. So we take the pieces of our chords, multiply them together, and they have to equal each other. Taking a look at this example, we've got two chords intersecting inside of our circle. So we're going to work on figuring out what this x value is. First, let's look at this chord where we've got the piece of x and 2. We're going to take the product of those things, so 2 times x is 2x. And for our other chord, we've got pieces of 4 and 3, so if we multiply those together, 4 times 3 is 12. So we get 2x equals 12. We need to get x all by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by the 2, and we end up with x equals 6. So if we take a look at this example, we've got two chords in our circle intersecting at a single point. What we're going to do is we're going to take the product of the pieces of one of the chords, and that has to equal the product of the pieces of our other chord. So let's first look at our horizontal chord. One piece is x, one piece is x plus 4. So we're going to multiply those things together. Now when we do that, that has to equal the product of the other lengths of our chord. So our vertical chord has pieces of x plus 2 and x plus 1. So we need to multiply those together. Now on the left hand side, I'm just going to distribute that x. So x times x is x squared, and x times 4 is plus 4x. Now on the right hand side, we're going to have to foil things out. x times x is x squared, x times 1 is 1x. 2 times x gives us 2x, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now on the right hand side, we can combine like terms with the 1x and the 2x. So if we add those together, we end up with 3x. So x squared plus 3x plus 2. And on the left hand side, we still have x squared plus 4x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on getting our variables on the same side and our numbers on the other side. So the first thing I'm going to do is take care of those x squareds. I'm going to subtract x squared from each side, and those will cancel each other out. So now on the left hand, all we have left is 4x equals 3x plus 2. I'm going to take this 3x and subtract it over to the left hand side, so we end up with x equals 2. Our next property deals with segments that have a common endpoint on the outside of our circle. And the way it's going to work, if we take the length of one of those lines, times its external portion, then that has to equal the length of our other line times its external portion. So here in our picture we've got two segments that have a common external point of A. Now one of them runs to point C going through point B, the other one runs to point E going through point D. Let's first look at that segment going across the top. It has a length of AC. That's the entire length of the segment. But what we want to do is we want to take that times the piece that's on the outside. So that's the piece that runs from A to B. And when we do that, that has to equal some similar things with our other segment. So we've got the segment that runs from A to E as the entire piece. And we also want to multiply that by the piece that's on the outside, its external portion. So the piece that runs from A to D. If we take a look at this example, we've got two segments that share a common endpoint on the outside of our circle. So we're going to use that formula that we were just talking about in order to find our length of x. Let's first take a look at the segment on the top of our picture. So what we want to do is we want to find the length of the entire segment. The piece on the inside is 9 and the piece on the outside is 6. So if we want the entire length, then we would add those things together. So we've got 15 for a total length times 
the portion that's on the outside, which is just the 6, equals, now we need to look at our other segment and find its total length. On the inside we've got x, on the outside we've got 5, so again we're going to add those together. And then we also need to multiply by the piece that's on the outside, which is the 5. Now let's take care of both pieces of multiplication that are happening. On the left hand side we have to take 15 times 6. On the right hand side we'll need to distribute our 5. And now we're going to work on solving for our x. So I'm going to take that plus 25 and subtract it from each side. So we've got 65 equals 5x. Last thing we need to do is divide each side by that 5. And we end up with an x value of 13. Now with this property we've been dealing with secant lines, lines that intersect our circle at two points. But this will also work if we have a secant and a tangent with a common external point. Let's first look at that piece across the top. We want the length of the whole thing. So we've got three on the inside, one on the outside. So if we add those together, that segment has a total length of four, but we want to multiply it by just its external piece, which is one. Now for our tangent line, the length of the whole thing is x, but then we want to multiply it by the length that's on the outside, which is still x. So on the right hand side, we've got x times x, which is x squared. And on the left hand side, 4 times 1 is 4. Now in order to get rid of that squared on our x, we have to square root both sides. When we square root a number, we should remember to put the plus or minus in there. And the square root of 4 is 2. So we've got x equals plus or minus 2. But now we have to stop and think about this for a minute. This is the length of a segment. Segments cannot have negative lengths, so the only possible answer here is x equals 2 because we can't have a negative length. There's no such thing as a negative measurement when we're talking about the length of a segment. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.